What's going on fish keepers? Welcome to the channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Today we're going to be talking about guppies and everything we need to know about them. Now guppies are a great beginner fish. They're a great community fish and I have 10 essential things that everyone should know about guppies whether or not you currently keep them or you're looking to get your first fish tank and you chose guppy as the beautiful fish to keep in your first aquarium. So let's get right into it. So before we get started, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because the last tip is the most essential one and it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and potentially a lot of heartbreak before you even begin your journey. Okay, so let's get into the first one here. So the first one is their diet. Uh, guppies are pretty diverse in what they can eat. They can pre eat pretty much anything. During when you get your first aquarium, your first aquarium kit, you're going to go to the store, you're going to pick out tropical flakes because guppies are tropical fish. So this is a pretty standard basic one that you're going to see or find, but you need to know that guppies do thrive on a varied diet. So that includes, uh, you can get different types of flakes, uh, pellets, you can get uh, bug bites, um, and as well as you can get uh, the frozen foods like the, the frozen uh, shrimp, as well as the blood worms. And these are all great high protein meals. Guppies will go crazy over and they love. So. Although they can survive on just your basic standard flake, there are other lots of great products out there. Uh, none of these are sponsored, but these are great products. The frozen blood worms, Fluval makes great products, the bug bites and the, and the tropical colored flakes. I also like to use a product from Canada, Support Local. This is a North Fin. They have great sinking pellets. Uh, the fish love them and they go nuts in there and high in protein and there's not a lot of fillers in these ones. And as well, if you are looking at breeding, and then uh, we'll get this later in the video, but this is, they also make some great fry starter food as well. And this comes in a powder form and it's high protein and high fat. Having them on a varied diet is really beneficial to them. It's gonna help them grow and live a longer, healthier life. However, you know, you are able to keep them on just your basic standard tropical flakes. So don't think that it is necessary. So number two, I wanna talk about hardiness. Now these guys are pretty hardy fish. However, when you get to your local stores, uh, your big box stores. A lot of these fish are going to come from fish farms from overseas. They're mass produced, mass bred, and sometimes they get a lot of inbreeding and their genetics just aren't as strong as they used to be. So it is possible that some of these guys now will be susceptible to diseases and other uh, deformities. So just be aware of that when you are purchasing them. If you use Facebook or know of anyone who's in a local aquarium group, a lot of fish keepers do their own local breeding and they'd be happy to trade or sell or even potentially give you uh, some guppies to begin with. So just be aware of that going forward. So number three, let's talk about tank mates. These guys are probably one of the most fun, energetic, social fishes. Uh, they're very small and uh, they're suitable for a wide variety of uh, other community type fish. So you can get them in with the uh, Neon Tetras, you can get them in with Plecos, you can get them with Corys, uh, Mollies do well with them, Platties. All these guys are gonna be great community fish for them and it will bring a big diversity into your tank. So I would, however, avoid uh, putting them in with like anything like a cichlid and that includes angelfish because they do have these long, beautiful tails and a lot of these bigger fish or more aggressive fish, territorial fish, will try and nip at their fins and it could cause them damage and it could even be fatal to them. So. Make sure that uh, you do are, you are choosing the proper tank mates for these guys. So number four, it's common diseases with these guys. Uh, these guys can get bloating, they can get dropsy. Uh, like I said, these guys come from fish farms overseas a lot of time from uh, when you get them from the big box store. So just be aware of that. They could come with parasitic worms and stuff like that. So if you are getting your first fish tank, you should be okay to throw them in and just let them quarantine in that their own tank. However, if you are buying uh, more guppies to your your first tank and it is uh recommended to quarantine these guys to make sure that uh, if they do have anything like that that they are expelled and if you do notice any uh parasites or any strange behavior you can either treat that or potentially return it to the fish store and make sure that you don't introduce these diseases into your own tank okay so so number five is breeding and uh, this is what makes guppies i think uh, a great beginner uh, fish and as well as a challenging thing for your more advanced level fish keepers because these guys are pro prolific breeders and their genetics are so uh, vast that they come in such a wide variety of colors and, and different styles with their fins and their tails. 
So these guys are prolific breeders. Uh, female will have anywhere from 20 to 30 fry every 20 to 30 days or so. So if you do have a little 10 gallon tank, be aware that you could have a, see a big population boom uh, very shortly after having them. That is if you have both males and females. And as well as what makes them challenging is that if you are mixing different types and different strands of uh, guppies, you can then try and create a unique, distinct uh, uh, profile for your fish. So this makes it a lot challenging for uh, experienced fish keepers who are into breeding uh, guppies as a hobby as well. So uh, like I said, these guys will fill your tank up very quickly. So just be aware of that. So that being said, tank requirements, these guys can, you know, as I said, they are, they pro, they will breed quite heavily. So you do want to make sure that you have an adequate tank size or just select a male or female only colony. Uh, these guys are tropical fish. Uh, they come from uh, East Asia, so they love to have warmer temperatures. Uh, it's, it's recommended they are about 76 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, however, the, the wide range of it is 72 to 78. Uh, which is about 22 to 26, I think, uh, degrees Celsius. These guys, if you do keep in warmer temperatures, their metabolisms will work a lot faster. Um, so they, it will shorten their lifespan the warmer you have it. However, this is how they live in their natural environment because they breed so often that uh, their lifespans are quite shorter. So how are we gonna set up this, these guys' tanks? Uh, you want to you want to add live plants to these guys. Now I know that some people like to have the uh, you know the fake plants because there are no maintenance, which is fine as well. Uh, you do got to be careful with the plastic, the sharp plastic edges. But if you are going to get uh, a live plants, I would highly recommend it because it will not only help with uh, removing some of the, the toxic ammonia and nitrites in the water column, it will also provide their natural environment. So so plants that I often use are Amazon swords, uh, Java fern. Uh, the Ludwigia rotalias, these are all great bushy plants that will provide space, cover, and even for new fry will give them a, a, a place to hide uh, when they are in your tank. So these are great additions to any tank and you don't have a professional aquascaper like I'm definitely not and I, I know I love the way that they, these plants uh, bloom and grow and then the more fish you have in there the more waste will create and the, the greater the plants will grow and bloom so so filtration besides having the natural filtration of the plants it's always recommended to have some other sort of filtration whether it's a sponge filter a hang on back filter or even a canister filter again the guppies they love to swim in any type of streams so if you have a canister filter or a submersible pump or anything like that these guys will love it and then you can see them they'll shoot right across into the jet stream and uh, it's really entertaining to watch. However, one thing that you do want to be aware about is if you do have a canister filter or a hang on back filter, you know, these fries are tiny, they're so small, and it is quite possible that they could get sucked up into the filter. So if you are trying to breed them, you do have to be aware of that. You can buy uh, like coarse uh, sponge covers for these, um, these intake uh, valves. So. Just be aware of that you can purchase that and it can protect you if you do want more uh, baby fry swimming around your tank. So don't be too alarmed, but just something to be aware of. So the lifespan of these guys, like I said, because they have such a prolific breeding experience, um, they multiply and duplicate so much that if you had, you know, three guppies in a tank with one male and two females, you would see the population 25x in a short amount of time. So. Because of that, they're, the males and females' sole purpose is to breed and recreate. And these guys do live a shorter lifespan of about two to three years. It's not something to be alarmed about if you randomly see one that has passed away, uh, if you have had it for quite a while, because again, they have short lifespans. So if you see all your fish have passed, then obviously something might be wrong in your, your aquarium that you might want to get checked out. But uh, just be aware that it is about three years of length. So this is the last and this is the most important thing. And this is the inspection of the fish when you buy them. Picking out a guppy is such a difficult thing because there's so many different types. You can get the cobras, you can get the koi, you can get the fancy. Like there is a, there are so many different types of guppies you can get. But what you do want to look for when you're picking them out is their coloring. If they have bright, vibrant colors, then you know that they're kind of healthy in the fish store. If they're looking really pale and lethargic, then you know that they might have something wrong with them. Uh, and as well as their body shape as well. Sometimes because they are so potentially inbred in these, in these farms from overseas, 
you might see some body deformities or, or missing fins or poorly shaped body. So it is definitely something to look for when you are purchasing a store. And this will save you from when you buy it and bring it back to your house and put it in your aquarium that it doesn't pass away from a sickness or a deformity shortly after you purchase it. Because if you are buying your first fish, it's such an exciting time. And uh, you know, when you get, when you're excited about a fish and then it, and it passes away, uh, it's very, it's very disheartening. So just be aware of that when you are picking out and selecting your, your fish, and then you should be good to go to have a you know healthy population of guppies. And then who knows, maybe you can be starting your own guppy farm in a, in a few years. All right. So thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any questions about guppies, uh, throw them in the comments below. If I miss anything, I would love to hear from you. And if you stuck around, please consider subscribing to the channel. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care.